Good morning, folks. Looking eastward on Stellarium, this is sunrise. We're going to back up time a little bit to 4 or 5 a.m. If you can get outside around that time tomorrow, you should look up, and the Lyrid meteor shower will be peaking and appearing to emanate near Vega. This will be well north in the sky for most. Putting our feet back on the ground, looking at the quake uptick zone, we took two more six-pointers there since we last spoke, making that five big quakes in three days. The China quake was the only one not in the northwest Pacific region, and the death toll there now is just shy of 200. They asked for rain, they got a twister, and rain. But the top note I have about this is something we saw in the north a week ago. First, keep in mind the clockwise motion of the big southern low down here. The air from the equatorial region north of Australia is pulling through this trough to the low between nations now, but that which is not captured in the helix is shot straight down to the Antarctic Circle once it gets west. Taking a look at that line and just like we saw in the U.S. about 10 days ago when tropical air had a pathway straight to the pole. In the U.K., a fire at the Hartlepool new plant allegedly of no danger. Meanwhile, south of that is quite the weather mix with parts of the Mediterranean and severe watch threat, while heat factors in Portugal and cold and snow are the story in parts of Germany. Up north, the big high pressure spins clockwise and outward, and this little low up north is the lowest point and strongest driver of the wind. Apart from that outward spin of the high pressure, you can see parts of Canada are going to get warmer today while just west of that they take an arctic chill where they indeed have winter weather advisories, some frost and freeze warnings east of the northward flow as well. Shifting to space weather, where 10 days of gamma drought became 4 in less than 3 days, with the last 2 just 5 hours apart from Celestial North and Ursa Major. Panel 2 on both the neutron and muon network shows rising cosmic ray density but nothing major yet. Solar wind finally getting its act back together, even if slowly. It finally kicked that resonance to the curb as well as the speed crept higher. Flaring, still very low, but is rising gradually with the complexity of Earth-facing sunspots on the move. Continuing yesterday's watching birth of an active region, this has grown fast and now spreads about 150,000 kilometers across the sun. We're looking for magnetic mixing, red and blue. Now the smaller integrated regions do not have developed umbras within, but to the left, that bigger interactive group has black umbra within the same orange penumbra, and this is our top flare candidate. By contrast, up north the umbral magnetics are well divided, the only opposing color is surface variation on the periphery of the sunspot area. Earth footprint has jumped around a bit, with the connectivity spread over to the right, we can expect that for a while. You remember yesterday, we worked to make sure you caught this faint CME emanating from that same big sunspot. Between that and a few other pops on the Earth-facing disk yesterday, NOAA forecasts a glancing blow from a CME just before the coronal hole stream arrives. You should all know by now, the coronal opening in play, gargantuan, and shades of the pyramid shape we saw turn in last year. Quake Watch has been successful so far. I do not think we are done yet. We'll take some shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.